it's April from April's Home, and today I thought I would share with you how I make a crock pot pot roast dinner. So I have all the ingredients here that I'll need for a really nice crock pot pot roast dinner. I have, of course, the roast that I'll be using for my pot roast. This is a beef chuck roast. It's a boneless um, one here. It was $12.78 and it looks like it is 3.21 pounds. It was $3.98 a pound. The nice thing about the beef chuck roasts is traditionally they have always been a more affordable cut of meat. But the trick is that you have to cook them a little bit longer so that they aren't too tough. So. The way I've always loved to make my pot roasts is in a crock pot. That way they can slowly cook throughout the day and by the time dinner rolls around, you have a delicious, tender pot roast dinner. So I like to do it all in one crock pot. I'm gonna sear up this meat here in just a minute and I'll show you how I do that with just a little salt and pepper. I've got a bag of mini baby red potatoes here as well as a bag of baby carrots and an onion. I'm also gonna throw in a couple of bay leaves just to help that broth because we'll be using the broth at the end to make some gravy. And just to keep this a little bit more budget friendly, I'm gonna make this without using beef broth added. Instead, I'm just gonna use water. That's how I always used to do it. And we'll test it at the end. If it didn't get enough flavor, we might add some beef bouillon or something like that. But after cooking all day with the potatoes and carrots and onions, and the bay leaves added. It's usually a really flavorful broth that makes a really yummy gravy for this dinner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my beef chuck roast out of the package. I'm gonna bring it over to my pan. We're gonna sear that on all sides. But before I get my meat searing, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my crock pot to high just to start warming it up. I'm gonna put in four cups of water. So I have put my meat in this really big skillet that I have. I've sprayed it with a little bit of pan spray just so it wouldn't start out sticking. I'm gonna turn this up to high and I'm gonna season this pot roast with a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, so I've got the heat turned on that. I'm gonna go ahead again and put a little bit of pepper on this side. When I turn it, I'll pepper and salt the other side as well. And then I like to have a pair of tongs nearby, good strong metal tongs, so I can flip this around. At 1.2, we will also stand this up on the ends to kind of sear the ends here. So we're going to go ahead and let this uh, burner heat up here and start searing this meat. I'll come back and show you when we flip it and when I stand it on its ends. So you can hear this loud and sizzling here. I think it's time to flip it, so I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. There we go. And we'll let that cook and sear on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and salt this side and pepper it as well. I usually sear on high heat, but I really keep an eye on it because it can um, get a little too dark really quickly if you're not keeping your eye on it. And if it starts to get too hot, you can just turn your burner down a little bit. And I've turned the fan off for now just so I can film, but you'll really want to keep your um, stove fan on because it does create a bit of smoke. Okay, and while this is searing on that side, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up and try to get a little bit of sear on the sides here. It's a little bit tricky sometimes because they're heavy and this big fat um, center here tends to want to pull apart. But if you just grip it with your tongs here, you just hold it like this to get a little bit of a nice sear on those edges. I just kind of hold it here for a minute or two. And then I'll move it around the different edges, just like so, to get a sear on all those sides. Of course, I'll spend a little bit more time doing this, but just so you get the idea of kind of flipping it around and letting those edges touch the pan and sear. I have removed this from the heat, and now it's time to transfer it to our crock pot. Um, into the four cups of water that we've already added to the bottom of my crock pot. So today I'm putting this in a pretty big crock pot. I think it's 10 or 12 quarts. I have done this same recipe in smaller crock pots before. 
but a nice big crock pot is really wonderful for being able to cook all of your potatoes and carrots and everything all in one. So again, there are four cups of water already heating up in my crock pot, and now I'm gonna transfer this pot roast over to my crock pot. And then to the hot pan that I seared the um, pot roast in, I'm gonna add two cups of water just to kind of pick up some of that delicious, um, the delicious brownings on the bottom. I'm just going to very lightly, I'm not gonna really scrape it, just kind of lightly move around the water with my flat spatula here and pick up some of that delicious um, brown uh, brownings there, just like so. And then I'll transfer this liquid to the crock pot as well, just so that we don't lose any of that delicious flavor. Okay, so we've got our pot roast in the crock pot covered with water. So far there's six cups of water in here. The two cups that I deglazed the pan with as well as the four cups we're starting out with. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more salt and pepper to this water here. And I'm gonna go ahead now and chop my onion and add that. Okay, so here's a little pepper and a little salt. I may add in a little dash of garlic powder later on in the cooking, but right now I'm just gonna add my onion here, just roughly chopped onion. You can add more onion if you like onion. We love onion, but I'm just gonna add one for now. Kind of stir that around a little bit. And I'll be adding my carrots and potatoes in a little while. I don't want them to get overcooked. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this pot roast cook for a couple of hours on high. Then I'll wash my potatoes and get my potatoes and carrots in. But before I do that, I'll also add in a couple of bay leaves. So I'll come back in two hours and show you the next step. The pot roast has been cooking now for a couple of hours and I'm going to go ahead now and add my carrots and potatoes. Today I'm adding one pound each, one pound of baby carrots and one pound of baby red potatoes. You can use just about any kind of potato. I do prefer these smaller potatoes. And also if you are making this for a larger family, you can just double up on the carrots and potatoes to help this meal stretch a little bit further. I would have added more carrots and more potatoes for my family back when I was serving this for the whole family, but since this is just for me and my husband, and of course we'll eat a lot of leftovers off of this meal, I'm just gonna go ahead with the one pound of potatoes and one pound of carrots. That should be plenty for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off there. Just kind of check it, give it a little bit of a stir here. It is doing great. We'll probably add some more water as well. I'm gonna go ahead and add my carrots. Use my flat spatula to kind of move them around the roast. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my potatoes. I've got some big ones in here. The bag had big ones and little tiny ones. I'm just putting them in here whole. I've washed them and double checked for any soft spots and cut those away. This bag was actually really pretty nice. All the potatoes are really good in this batch today. Okay, so you can see all those delicious potatoes and carrots. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more pepper and a little bit more salt. And just a dash of some garlic powder. We like that flavor, so I've been adding that recently. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some more water and add that. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and add another probably four cups of water here to bring the level of water up over the potatoes and carrots. You can see how nice the broth is coming along. It looks and smells absolutely delicious. I'm gonna go ahead now and continue cooking this on high for a few more hours. I'll keep checking it. When everything is done, I'll put it on low to let that finish cooking. And then just before dinner, I'll make the gravy and I'll show you how to do that as well. So. We'll go ahead and keep this on high for now just so we can bring that water back up to a nice simmer and let that cook away for another few hours. It has been another few hours and my pot roast is all done. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lid here and check everything one last time. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my crock pot off now. I'm gonna use this big straining spoon here to remove the carrots and potatoes. I'm gonna put it here on the tray. Then I'm gonna go ahead and strain the broth into this um, 
pot here through the straining basket so that I can make gravy. Okay, so I've removed the pot roast. I've surrounded it on the tray here with uh, some of the carrots and potatoes. Then I've put the rest here in this bowl. You can see here that I've pulled out the two bay leaves. I'm going to just go ahead and discard those. So we have this already. I'll probably Top this with a little bit of aluminum foil to keep it warm while I make the gravy. Also, here is the broth that I strained. Definitely use two um, hot pads there to pour the crock pot into here through the strainer. It was really heavy, but you can see it's nice and strained out now. And we're gonna turn this into a big pot of gravy. Okay, so to my pan here, I've added about two thirds of a stick of butter. I'm just letting that melt over high. I'll probably turn the heat down here in just a minute, but I wanted to get this butter melting. And then I'm gonna add about three quarters of a cup of flour to the pan here and let that cook with the butter for probably just under a minute. Then I'm gonna add my broth and whisk that together. I'll add a little bit of salt and pepper and garlic powder, a little splash of milk if I think it needs it. Adding about three fourths of a cup of flour going to whisk that together. And just let that flour and butter cook for about a minute or so. You don't want it to burn or anything like that, but you do want to get the flour cooked a little bit. I just like to make sure my whisk is whisking it all really nicely. And then when that's done, I'll just add the broth. So now I'm adding the broth. I'm just going to add about half at first and give it a really good, quick whisk. And see how it's doing. We're going to turn that heat down just a little bit. And now I'm going to add a little bit more. Just gonna go ahead now and add the rest. Okay, so now we'll bring this back up to boiling and keep whisking it while it thickens. Now this was a lot of broth. If I didn't make enough roux and it doesn't quite thicken, I may have to make a little bit more roux and add it, but we will see. I'm also going to take the time now to add a little bit of pepper and salt. I just eye it and at the end of uh, making the gravy I give it a good taste. Okay, back to stirring. You really want to make sure to get your whisk in all the edges to make sure that you didn't leave any flour in the corners of the pan. Another way that you can thicken gravy is with a little bit of a cornstarch slurry. That makes a clearer gravy. The butter and flour gravy is a little bit more um, uh, milky colored, kind of like this. I like to make it both ways. I'm going to go ahead now and give this broth and gravy a taste here before it thickens up too much just to see how it's tasting. Okay, I think it needs a little bit more salt and just a little bit more pepper and a little bit more of the garlic powder. Okay, it's starting to come up to a boil again. You really want to make sure you keep stirring it while it thickens. I probably should have used a little tiny bit more flour. It doesn't look like it's thickening like it normally does. This was just a bunch of broth here today, but that's okay. I love having extra gravy on hand. It's nice to use for leftovers and other recipes. I'm gonna turn that back down a little bit. Okay, so my gravy's been cooking for a few more minutes, and although it is starting to thicken, it's just not thickening up the way I like. So I'm gonna make a little bit more roux. I just miscalculated out how much broth was in here. This is just something you can do. We'll see if this works here. But to avoid lumps, you would never wanna add flour directly into this gravy. So instead, I've melted an additional half stick of butter here. I'm gonna put about a half cup of flour in the butter, and I'm gonna stir this around. 
just like so. Then we'll add this a little bit at a time and whisk it into the broth. So we have a nice little floury butter paste here that we will go ahead and add in a scoop at a time, just like so. And each time I add a little bit, I will whisk it a little bit more. Again, we don't want lumps in our gravy. And I can see that that is already helping quite a bit. Another scoop. And another. is turning out really nicely. It's thickening up nicely. I'll add the last little bit here and then I'll whisk that in. I'm also going to go ahead and add in just a splash of milk. There's so much broth in here it doesn't need a lot. Um, but I just like a little bit of milk in there for the creamy flavor. That was probably only about a quarter of a cup. You can add more milk if you want to increase the volume a little bit. Of course, you'd have to add more thickener if you added too much more liquid. Okay, I'm going to give this another taste here. So my gravy is nice and thickened here. I'm going to turn the heat back up because it is just not having enough beef flavor. So I've melted a couple of little bouillon cubes in just the smallest amount of water here. Just two of those beef uh, bouillon cubes. Just to punch up the beef flavor a little bit. If I had powdered bouillon, I would just add that, but I cannot find my beef powdered bouillon here. I might be all out. I have a lot of chicken, but not a lot of beef. So, there we go though. We will stir that in, and that is going to punch up that beefy flavor for this gravy. You can add all sorts of different flavors to your gravy if you want to add any herbs or other spices. You can do that too. I mostly prefer to keep it pretty simple with salt and pepper and sometimes a little bit of garlic powder. Um, sometimes a little onion powder. Today I'm just using garlic. And now I'll give it another taste. That is much better. That tastes delicious now. And I think we're all ready to serve up our pot roast dinner. So here is our pot roast dinner all ready to serve. We've got pot roast, carrots, potatoes, and gravy. You could serve this with biscuits or an additional veggie side if you'd like, but this is what I like, just nice and simple, carrots, potatoes, and pot roast with a nice serving of gravy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my plate all ready for dinner, and I'll come back and show you what that looks like. So here is our pot roast dinner all served up. My husband carved it into some really nice slices there. I've drizzled some gravy over the top. We've got some carrots with onions and potatoes and that delicious gravy. I'm gonna go ahead now and give the pot roast a try. A little bit of the gravy there, and that is absolutely delicious and tender just like I thought it would be. I am really looking forward to dinner tonight, and my husband made some absolutely delicious oatmeal chocolate chip cookies last night, and that will be our dessert after we have this delicious dinner. So that is my crock pot pot roast dinner. I hope you enjoyed watching me make all of this. I hope you give this recipe a try. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.